SpaceX is leaning heavily on NASA for funding. Without it, Starship might not even exist. Lately, Elon's been getting slammed with all sorts of crazy accusations like that. Yeah, they're brutal, and they've definitely put his rep on the line. But right before Flight 10, he dropped a statement that didn't just shut up the critics, it even left NASA totally embarrassed. So, what's really going on? Let's dive into it on today's episode of Alpha Tech. In early June, Elon Musk openly criticized President Donald Trump's new tax and spending cuts. And of course, Trump didn't take it lightly. He fired back, threatening to cancel federal contracts with SpaceX, Tesla, and Musk's other companies, calling it the easiest way to save money. On Truth Social, Trump wrote, The easiest way to save money in our budget, billions and billions of dollars, is to terminate Elon's governmental subsidies and contracts. Now, here's the big deal. SpaceX currently holds around $22 billion in government contracts. If Trump follows through, those deals could be on the chopping block, and several major U.S. space programs might face serious shakeups. Out of that $22 billion, about $15 billion comes from NASA, covering everything from routine Falcon 9 launches to the development of the Starship Human Landing System. You know, the one NASA's planning to use to land astronauts on the moon later this decade. And don't forget the $5 billion contract for the Dragon capsule, which handles crew and cargo missions to the International Space Station. The remaining $7 billion comes from the Department of Defense. That includes launching national security satellites, providing secure military internet through Starlink, and other classified missions. In fact, just two days ago, SpaceX launched the Space Force's X-37B space plane on its eighth mystery mission from Launch Complex 39A using their Falcon 9. The goal? To test new communication systems and further prove the reusability of this unique space plane. So, yeah, we're talking about serious money and critical missions here. That's why some people are now questioning whether SpaceX has become too dependent on taxpayer-funded contracts, money that comes straight from the pockets of everyday Americans. But if you're thinking along those lines, you might want to hit pause. Because Elon Musk himself pushed back on that idea just recently. In a post, he explained, The total revenue that SpaceX will receive from NASA this year is about $1 billion, out of roughly $15 billion total, so around 7%. He also pointed out that, all of these contracts were won through competitive bids, meaning if SpaceX didn't get them, the government would probably be paying a lot more to someone else. Yeah, those comments pretty much made NASA lose face. Even though they didn't come out and criticize Musk, and on paper, NASA and SpaceX are still really close partners, what he said still put the agency in a pretty awkward spot. So why is that? Well, everything Musk said checks out. SpaceX's revenue this year is projected to hit about $15.5 billion. And that number isn't pulled out of thin air. When SpaceX released its year-end report for 2024, they estimated $13.1 billion. And in the end, they only missed by about 1.5%. So for 2025, most of that $15.5 billion is expected to come from Starlink. They're aiming for 7.6 million subscribers and around $12.3 billion in revenue. As of June, the Starlink constellation had 7,578 satellites in orbit, with 7,556 of them active, and that number is only going to keep growing. The rest comes from things we already talked about. Satellite launch contracts for other organizations and crew and cargo transport services to the ISS. But here's the kicker, the NASA piece, that's only about $1 billion. Out of $15.5 billion in total revenue, that works out to just 6.67%. So, when Musk said 7%, he was actually rounding up a little. Bottom line, NASA makes up only a tiny slice of SpaceX's annual revenue. And that really drives home the point. SpaceX has a diverse income stream and doesn't depend on NASA to survive or grow. But that's not all. The NASA contracts that SpaceX wins aren't handed to them as a favor. They earn them through fair competition against other players. Think about it. What company can really compete with SpaceX when it comes to ferrying astronauts to the ISS with Dragon, Boeing, Starliner? If it were that reliable, it wouldn't have run into problems that left astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams stranded on the station for nine months. And as of now, 
it still hasn't completed a second flight. And what about Russia's Soyuz? NASA has to pay around $85 million per seat for that old, outdated spacecraft, an experience that isn't exactly comfortable for astronauts. Dragon, the NASA Office of Inspector General, estimates a nominal value of about $55 million per seat, and it's far more modern and comfortable. Similarly, SpaceX's Falcon 9 can launch a satellite for $60 to $90 million, far cheaper than ULA's Delta IV, heavy at $400 million. This cost advantage isn't just about money, it's a clear sign of SpaceX's efficiency and innovation, which also played a big role in the Artemis program. There, SpaceX beat out Blue Origin to win a $2.89 billion contract to develop Starship, thanks to its cutting-edge design and lower-cost potential. Musk's statement isn't just bragging, it underscores the hard truth. Without SpaceX, NASA would be paying many times more, or might even struggle to complete critical missions, like ferrying astronauts to the ISS. This reliance puts NASA in a tricky spot, especially as SpaceX continues to prove its edge with Starship Flight 10, pushing forward the HLS version to meet the needs of Artemis 3, a mission-critical link NASA simply can't do without. Which raises the real question. Is SpaceX relying on NASA? Or is it actually NASA that relies on SpaceX? I think you already know the answer. So, what's the real punchline of the Musk's statement? He said it clearly. There are zero handouts. Zero. Exactly. Musk is stressing once again that SpaceX doesn't get any free government handouts. Every dollar the company receives is payment for specific services. Ferrying astronauts, delivering cargo, or developing Starship, based entirely on the value SpaceX provides. This statement directly counters the idea that SpaceX is thriving on government subsidies, while also reinforcing the company's philosophy of self-reliance and business efficiency. And he made this statement right before Starship Flight 10, driving home the point. SpaceX is a private company that succeeds on its own technological capability and sustainable business model, without needing NASA's charity. Here's something else to put it in perspective. In the commercial crew program, NASA awarded contracts to both SpaceX, $2.6 billion for Crew Dragon, and Boeing, $4.2 billion for Starliner. Crew Dragon successfully launched in 2020 and has completed over 10 crewed missions to the ISS. Starliner, on the other hand, has struggled with technical issues, including software glitches and leaking valves, and as of 2025, is still not certified for regular crew flights. Its uncrewed test mission in 2022 failed, and the first crewed mission in 2024 ran into problems, forcing NASA to delay plans. What's striking is that even though Boeing went over budget and kept falling behind schedule, NASA continued to support them and poured in more money. Meanwhile, SpaceX finished its contract on time and under budget. The point is clear. SpaceX isn't just more efficient, it's also more reliable. No handouts, no special favors, just results. All thanks to Elon Musk's leadership. But the drama didn't stop there. SpaceX and Elon Musk soon found themselves caught up in a federal tax controversy. Specifically, multiple reports claimed that SpaceX relies heavily on government contracts, but has paid little to no federal income taxes. Haha, <laughs> if you're still with me, you're probably thinking, Wait, seriously? According to some articles, SpaceX may have paid very little or nothing in federal income taxes since its founding in 2002. And Musk reportedly told investors that the company might never have to pay any federal income taxes. The financial situation of the rocket maker has long been kept secret since SpaceX is a private company. However, documents reviewed by these reports suggest that SpaceX may be taking advantage of a legal tax provision, allowing the company to use over $5 billion in losses as of the end of 2021 to offset future taxable income. Back in 2017, during his first term, President Trump enacted a change that removed the expiration date for this tax benefit for all companies. For SpaceX, that means nearly $3 billion of those losses can be applied indefinitely against future taxable income. Tax experts say that not paying taxes on $5 billion in taxable income is a significant and notable amount, especially for a company so unusually dependent on U.S. government contracts. SpaceX works closely with the Pentagon, NASA, and other agencies, 
giving the company a critical role in national security. According to documents in 2020, federal contracts generated nearly 84% of the rocket maker's revenue, a figure that had not been previously reported. By comparison, bigger tech companies, including some that also benefit from tax provisions, typically pay billions in federal income taxes. Microsoft, for example, reported expecting to pay over $14 billion in federal income taxes in the last fiscal year. SpaceX can benefit from this tax provision even as the company's business grows. Using a measure of corporate profitability, the company made roughly $5 billion in profit from core operations last year, up from $2.6 billion in 2023, according to private communications with certain stakeholders. Danielle Bryan, CEO of the Project on the Government Oversight, a watchdog group investigating government corruption and waste, noted that the tax benefit was originally intended to help companies stay afloat in tough times. She called it strange that SpaceX is using it now, since it's clearly not meant for a company doing so well. However, it's important to remember that SpaceX has taken on enormous financial risk over the past 20 years, and using the net operating loss provision is a legally valid reward for those risks. Without NOLs, companies like SpaceX might hesitate to invest heavily in R&D and cutting-edge projects, which are essential for breakthroughs in space technology. Reports indicate that SpaceX has paid some form of income tax over the years, though perhaps not to the federal government. In one document, the company stated it expected to pay $483,000 in foreign taxes and $78,000 in state income taxes in 2021. Additionally, the company reported paying $6,000 in income taxes in 2020 and 2021, but it didn't disclose whether these payments went to the federal, state, or local government. Many reports often overlook that the company still contributes to the tax system through other forms of taxation. This shows that SpaceX isn't breaking the law or deliberately dodging taxes. It's simply legally optimizing its federal income tax. If they were breaking the law, Elon Musk wouldn't exactly be chilling right now, casually relaxing ahead of Starship Flight 10. This is one of the largest rockets ever built, definitely the largest reusable rocket, says Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, who tracks rocket launches in his spare time. Starship isn't just a billionaire's toy. It's a launch system designed to revolutionize space travel, sending cargo and crews into orbit at nearly unbelievable costs. And it represents a bright, tech-optimist future, the kind of vision Silicon Valley has always promised. Starship is the backbone of countless plans and projects, and its success could redefine humanity's path in space.